Where are you? I've been calling you since noon. Did you tell Lewis? How did it go? Sorry, I had the phone turned off while driving to the divorce lawyer's office. It's been ages since the last time I was in the driver's seat. Ever since the brakes failed that evening, I've been anxious about getting into the car. Anyway, I'm at an art supply store now. I was running low on oil paint, so I had to stop by and get some. Okay, but what did the lawyer say? I promise he's one of the best in the business. And I'm not just saying that because he's your nephew's godfather. I started having second thoughts as I was about to enter the building. So I turned around and left. And I told you, you don't have to worry about him telling anyone about this. He hasn't even told Vincent, and they've been best friends since kindergarten. You haven't told him either, right? Of course not. I would never betray my sister's trust like that. Right. Uh, sorry for being so paranoid. And sorry for making you keep this a secret from your husband. But the truth is, I'm not even sure I can go through with it anymore. What do you mean? You seemed so certain yesterday. Even this morning, you were confident you were making the right choice. What could have changed your mind in four hours? Well, as soon as I got out of the car, I turned my phone back on and saw I had three missed calls. Two from you and one from the hospital. The hospital? Why? Is everything alright? Everything's fine. Well, as fine as it could be. I didn't want to say anything just in case my suspicions turned out to be wrong, but I suppose I can tell you now. You're scaring me. Please, just tell me what's wrong. Remember when I took the bus out of town to go to an art exhibit on Monday? I went to the hospital in a city a few hours from here to take a pregnancy test. Elena, if you were so worried about the word getting out, you could have just asked me to buy one for you. You didn't have to go through all of that. I know, but I wanted to be absolutely certain I had to visit a hospital. It's funny, isn't it? Remember how excited we were to learn there was a decent clinic opening up in this rundown little town? And then later I was so overjoyed when I found out my future brother-in-law was this director. I thought he'd make my life so much easier. Didn't you say that they had a turbulent relationship going years without saying hello to one another? Even if he did find out somehow, maybe he wouldn't have told Louis. But he would have definitely told his father. Sorry, I don't know why I'm rambling on about this. It's not like I can change the past. What matters is that once I called the hospital back, they told me the test results were positive. So you're pregnant? Is that why you turned away from the lawyer's office? Don't tell me you're having second thoughts about the divorce. I don't know. I'm not sure. I can't bring myself to think about it right now. You know, I've always dreamed of having a big, happy family. Children can sense when parents are miserable. Didn't we see it firsthand with our parents? They were miserable, and their misery made our lives miserable too. I know your situation is different, but still. Kate, please stop. I told you I don't want to talk about it right now. I need some time to think. You're going to make me break down crying in front of a bunch of kids buying paintbrushes. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Just text me when you get back home. Are you going to tell Louis? I don't know. I haven't even asked him for a divorce yet. I couldn't just spring all this on him at once. Hey, whatever happens, I'll always have your back. I know. Thanks. I'll update you later. Louis, are you still at the office? I am. I'll have to work overtime today. We're investigating reports of fraud and bribery in the planning and development department. It could take all night to find something useful. Do you really have to take care of those yourself? I want to make sure we've collected enough evidence before I call in outside help. The department head's been accused of soliciting bribes in exchange for covering up developers' construction violations. Oh, is this, by any chance, about the building that collapsed the other day? I was watching it live on TV, and I was so glad to see every resident was safely evacuated. Yes, that's what prompted us to take a closer look at the department. The development company in question has already built over a dozen buildings, including the brand new private high school that was finished a month ago. If these accusations hold my merit, most, if not all of them, could be illegal structures. That's so cruel. How could they endanger so many people so carelessly? Wait, is it fine for you to be telling me all this stuff? Isn't it considered classified information? I'm sure it's fine as long as you don't disclose it to anyone. It'll all come to light eventually once the legal proceedings begin. 
I won't tell a soul, I promise. The strange thing is, the accused has been in charge of the department for over 12 years now. I wonder if my father ever suspected him before he retired. I'll try to give him a call and see. Oh, and I know you wanted to have a talk this evening, but you don't mind postponing it, right? Sure. Please take as much time as you need. It's more important than what I wanted to talk to you about anyway. And what was it that you wanted to talk to me about? Can you tell me over the phone? I still have a few minutes before the meeting starts. No, sorry. It's not really something I should say over the phone. Plus, who knows? What if someone's listening to your calls? Listening to my calls as in wiretapping? Exactly. That's what they do to all government officials, isn't it? I think I saw a documentary film about it the other day. But who'd be listening to me? I don't think anyone would go through that much trouble to listen in on the calls of a small town mayor. If you say so. You know, lately, my thoughts start racing as soon as the sun sets. It's so cold and dark outside. A cold wind has been blowing all day, and now I can hear thunder in the distance. It feels like a storm might be approaching. What if the power goes out like last time? Sorry, I don't know why I'm saying all this. I don't want you to worry about me. I'll be fine. Listen, Elena, you'll be safe inside the house. Even if the power goes out, you can use the portable generator in the garage. If you are too anxious about being home alone, you can stay over at your sister's house. Would you like me to send you the driver or call you a taxi? No, it's fine. I don't want to bother her too much. I'll just paint something to calm my nerves. I used to love painting during hurricanes when I was little. Really? You've never mentioned that before. Yes. I guess this is the first time it's come up in a conversation. Sorry, I have to go. This meeting is about to start. If you need anything, call my assistant, okay? Okay. Good luck. Thanks. Take care. I love you. I love you too. Avery, what are you up to? Do you have a moment to talk? Sure, Elena, what is it? My flight's been delayed indefinitely due to the thunderstorm. So I'm just idling at the airport trying to wait out the storm. I need to make it back as soon as possible to finish the big presentation I've been preparing for months by tomorrow evening. Oh, I'm sure you'll be able to complete it in time. It's starting to rain here too. It's pretty scary. Isn't Lewis there with you? No, he has to work all night, but it's fine. I got a new set of oil paints this morning. So I'll just pass the time by painting. That's actually why I'm texting you. Remember a few months back when I showed you Tempest on the Sea at night and told you how much I wanted to be able to recreate it? I think so. Back then, you sent me a really helpful masterclass about Ivasov Key's technique. I've tried looking for it everywhere, but I just can't seem to find it. Could you look for the link on your end? I'd really appreciate it. Of course. I think it was around the time I tried learning how to make baked Alaska so it's probably on the same website I used for baking courses. Thank you so much. And Baked Alaska? That's pretty amazing. Lewis and I have been meaning to try it, but we never got a chance to do it. Perhaps you could let us know when you make it next time. Oh, I never really learned how to make it. Marco and I slaved over it for seven hours and it ended up being a half-melted mess. Fun experience, though. Good news, I found the master class here. Did you get it? Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. But isn't it difficult to focus with thunderstorms outside? Well, the lights are flickering a little bit, but we do have a generator in the garage. I should be fine even if they go out, right? Speaking of which, it might be difficult to walk to the garage in the dark. Should I bring it out to the patio in advance? Sure, that sounds like a good idea. As long as you don't start it there. I know, I know. Give me a second. Avery, are you still on the phone? Yes. I think I saw someone by the garage door. What, did Lewis get back home? I don't think so. He had to work late today. I opened the door to grab the generator when I thought I saw someone quickly hide next to the garage door. Elena, you should call the police. But what if I mistook a tree branch or something for a human silhouette? It is pretty dark. Can't you call Lewis or Kate to come over? Lewis is at an important meeting and Kate must be asleep by now. I'll just get a taxi and drive to the nearest hotel for the night. But what if they're booked for the night? You know how crowded they get during tourist season? Listen, why don't you stay at my apartment for the night? I cleaned and organized it before leaving for New York City. You can ask the landlady for the key. Is it really okay? I don't want to inconvenience you too much. I might just be overreacting. Of course it's okay. Safety comes first. I'll send you the address. In that case, I'll call Lewis's office and let them know I'll be staying over. Sure, but do you want to call 911 just in case? Could they gain entry into the house through the garage or maybe a window? It's impossible to enter the house from the garage directly and I doubt they can break the bars on the windows before the taxi arrives. I'd feel bad for calling the police if it's another false alarm. 
I'll tell Luis in the morning and we can check the security camera footage in the yard ourselves. All right, as you wish. Ask the taxi for a license plate number and be careful, okay? Okay. Elena, where are you? Are you okay? Huh? Sorry, I was asleep. What's wrong? I'm so relieved. Are you home? Relieved? Why? I'm at Avery's place. I was texting her when it started to rain. I told her I was home alone and I thought I'd seen someone standing by the garage door. She said I could stay over at her apartment since she was still out of town on her business trip. I asked her assistant to let you know where I was and why I left when the meeting was over. Didn't she tell you? I'm so glad to hear that you're safe. And no, she hasn't said a word. I'll have a talk with her later. Did you call 911 when you saw the stranger? No. I mean, I'm not even sure if there was anyone out there. It was hard to see in the pouring rain. I thought my mind was playing tricks on me. I am sorry if I'd known she wouldn't relay it to you. I would have called you myself. Did the meeting finish earlier than expected? You must have been worried when you saw the house empty. Elena, the house wasn't empty. What do you mean? Our neighbor, Mrs. Allen, called the office to let me know he'd heard a loud explosion coming from our house and called the police. I left immediately. When I got there, I saw several police cars and a fire truck. They said the portable generator had caught fire in the garage. They found a spilled fuel container next to it, and you were nowhere in sight. What? But I never even tried turning it on. I left the house before the lights went out. Are you absolutely certain? Yes, I'm positive. Then could someone have done this on purpose? If there really was someone at the garage door, then we need to report this to the police right away. I'll ask the officers to take a look inside the house. Is the house okay? Part of the garage was burned down, but thanks to the rain and Mrs. Allen's call, it was put out pretty quickly. The house otherwise seems to be mostly untouched. Louis, please don't even think about staying in there. Come over here and we can have a better look at the scene tomorrow. I am sure Avery won't mind. She was friends with you long before we even met. All right, but first, I'm going to go to the police station and report this. In the meantime, try to get some sleep. How could I possibly get any sleep at a time like this? I'll go brew a cup of coffee and wait for you. And it might take me hours to get there. I don't want you to stay up all night worrying. I promise I'll try to stay calm, but I am not sure I could fall asleep even if I tried to. Should I call Kate and let her know? No, it's okay. It's pretty late and there's no need to make them panic since we're both safe. As you wish. Please stay safe and drive carefully. I will. I'll call you when I get there. Elena, I saw your house in the news. I can't believe lightning struck your garage last night and you didn't tell me? Lightning? Oh, you're talking about the cover story. What cover story? It wasn't really a lightning strike. The portable generator caught fire and exploded. They're suspecting foul play, but we have no hard evidence. What? How can you say that like it's not a big deal? Why don't you stay over at our place? You can't stay there any longer. First the threatening notes, then the break accident, and now this? You should get away from that family as soon as possible. We're at Avery's place right now. It should be safer here. Elena, you've been married for a year, and there have already been three different attempts to ruin your life. You should go as far away from them as possible, at least for your baby's sake. But Louis also saw it happen this time. Maybe he can figure out who's doing this. Like the last two times? Face it, he is either in denial or he has something to do with all of this. That can't be true. I just need a little more time to figure things out. Maybe this pregnancy was a sign to stay and keep fighting a bit longer. Elena, no. We'll see what the police say. We'll stay at a hotel for a few days. Fine, but I'm going to call you every hour and check up on you. Isn't that a little excessive? I just want to make sure you're safe. Okay, okay. Elena, Lewis called me this morning. Any news about the fire? I can't believe he went through something so horrible. Nothing yet. The policemen are going through the footage, but as expected, it's pretty difficult to make out anything in the darkness, wind, and rain. We really need to figure things out as soon as possible. I have a feeling these attacks will only get worse in the future. Is there anything I can do to help? You know I work for a pretty large tech firm. I think we might be better equipped to work on the footage than a small town police station. If you send me a copy of the footage, 
I'd go over it myself and look for clues. Would you really do that? Thank you. Of course. Both you and Lewis are dear friends of mine. I'll help however I can. But what about your presentation? Didn't you have to finish it by today? I already talked to Marco to finish polishing it up while I was working on the footage. Who knew dating a colleague would be so advantageous? You've asked him already. How are you so quick? Oh, he's here with me. They ended up canceling the flight. I couldn't go back to the hotel room, so I stayed over his place. Well, thank him for me. I am lucky to have friends like you. We would still be friends even if Lewis and I were to separate, right? I know you've been friends with him since college, and we just met a year ago, so... Separate? Why? Did something happen? It's just a hypothetical question. You can be honest with me. I'm great at keeping secrets, I swear. Well, as you know, two months into our marriage, we moved back to our hometown after his father's retirement. At first, everything seemed to be going great. We were happy living close to our families again, but then I started receiving threatening messages in the mail. Whoever was sending them seemed to know every personal detail about our lives. They kept telling me to divorce Lewis, that I wasn't good enough for him, that I wasn't smart enough for him because I had no college degree. They'd been sending me threats almost daily since then, threatening the lives of Lewis, Kate, and even my nephew. I didn't want to believe them, but now I know the longer I wait, the worse it's going to get. Elena, that's terrifying. Have you told Lewis this? Have you told the police? I couldn't say it to him. They knew our schedules down to the minute. They said if I even attempted to tell him, they'd get rid of both of us. But he's the mayor. He has the power to put an end to this. You weren't thinking of spending the rest of your life in fear, were you? Does anybody else know about this? I've only told my sister. I don't think they can monitor our texts, but they seem to be following Lewis the closest. Maybe it's just best for everyone if we divorce quietly. Elena, hear me out. You can divorce him and run away without saying a word. But there's no guarantee they'll stop coming after you. These people already know too much about you and your family. You can only be safe again once you've figured out who's behind all this and put an end to it. But what can I do? I feel so powerless. Well, first you need to send me pictures of the notes you've been receiving. Are they handwritten or typed up? They're typed up. That's fine. It could still be useful. When did you get the last note? Send me as much of your security camera footage as you can. Oh, and tell me if you remember anything unusual from last night. All right, I got it. Yesterday morning. I checked the footage, but there was nothing unusual. Just the mailman delivering the letters. Where are you right now? Are you still in my apartment? Where is Lewis? Yes, uh, Lewis is at his office. Hopefully he can be safe there. All right, good. If there's nothing malicious installed on your phone, you should be fine in there. I've made sure to switch out my phone a few times. I haven't downloaded any new apps. I've been using a VPN and regularly checking the phone for viruses using trusted antivirus software. I haven't used public Wi-Fi once since all this started. Good. Thankfully, the vast majority of the town doesn't appear to be tech-savvy enough to pose any serious threats. You'd be surprised how many of them don't even bother changing their default router passwords. It's almost too simple. Anyway, the more people they've reached out for help, the higher the chances are that they've left traces behind. Oh, I just remembered something unusual from yesterday. I called Lewis's assistant and warned her I wouldn't be home for the night, but she never told Lewis. So, it either slipped to her mind or she hid it deliberately. Or perhaps Lewis is the one lying. I know it must be difficult for you to trust anyone right now. You probably can't even trust me fully, but Lewis has never done anything that made me doubt his moral character. You've known him for years before you got married. Why would he decide to terrorize his new bride out of the blue? I know, sorry. I'm just trying to make sense of everything that's happened. Could you send me as much information about his assistant as possible? I'm going to take some time, but I'll get to the bottom of this. Thank you. After all this time, I finally have a glimmer of hope. Elena, where are you? Are you still at my apartment? We found something. We're at Lewis's parents' place. His father insisted we stay there since it's more secure here. They have 24-7 security. You need to grab Lewis and get out of there right now. What? Why? I know who the culprit is. Really? I'll make up an excuse. But who is it? It's Steve Walsh, Lewis's brother. What? How? Why? I'll send you everything I've discovered. We got pretty lucky. All it took was identifying the teen who was hired to set your house on fire. Once we had a solid lead, the rest of the web unraveled pretty quickly. You managed to identify him? But the footage was so dark. 
That's true. The footage from that night was almost unusable, but we managed to identify him during the day when he came by to scout out the location. He was wearing his face mask and a dark hoodie, but he took them off once he figured he'd jog far enough away from the scene. He was caught clearly on one of the new traffic cameras Lewis had installed. We figured out his identity using a brand new facial recognition system that our company has been developing. Luckily, it was pretty quick since most of the town still uses Facebook and Instagram to stay in touch with their relatives. I'll send you the report once you're in a safer place. It's incomplete, but it's enough to get him and his accomplices locked away immediately. I asked Lewis to travel to NYC as soon as possible for an impromptu vacation. Once we had gotten away from the house, I told him everything. He was shocked and devastated to find out what I'd been going through. Nevertheless, he tried his best to be understanding about my reasoning for not telling him or the police. Once we got to New York City, Avery and Marco shared their findings with us. Steve had been involved in numerous corrupt schemes and dealings behind his father's back for years. Once he retired, he tried to usurp his spot as the mayor, but their father declared his full support for Lewis. Scared that his crimes would come to light under his brother's leadership, he decided to make sure Lewis left the town for good. I am still not certain why he tormented me first. I guess he wanted to start with an easy target. He was testing the waters to see how much he could get away with Lewis's assistant. Steve's mistress helped set up recording devices in his office. The rest was done on Steve's orders by the plumbers, mailman, movers, and just about anyone you'd allow to get near your house with no suspicion. Since we'd spent so much time away from home, he knew we wouldn't have found a few unfamiliar faces that suspicious. Steve's been taken into custody along with his many accomplices. Since most of our evidence wasn't obtained legally, Lewis had to start from scratch and use his authority to rediscover everything we learned and more. Looks like they won't be leaving prison anytime soon. My sister finally regained her trust in my husband. They come over often to make sure we're doing all right. Avery has finished her work in town and moved in with her boyfriend. I am still not sure what she was working on. All I know is that it had something to do with confidential government data. We're staying in town until we make sure the criminals get their retribution. After that, once the baby's born, we're planning on moving somewhere far, far away. The good thing is, Lewis has been spending more time at home. We've been assigned therapist by the corp, but I'm not sure I ever forget what those vile people put us through. Still, I feel at rest knowing the people who wronged us will spend the rest of their days inside prison walls. We'll make sure of that.